just uh, talk about the excitement of, of beating Kentucky and just advancing on the play in the NFL. I think the biggest thing is, um, you know, this is a special group of guys. Um, for those, you know, the, the seniors went 2-13 and won their freshman year. I took over in January of their freshman year at the end of the season. And we've built the program quickly, uh, two straight Atlantic 10 championships, but two straight first round exits. So to finally advance and to uh, move on to the next uh, frontier, so to speak, by advancing the tournament has been exciting, and I think it was a natural progression and something we needed to do. And I can really see it in the guys that they removed a weight off their shoulder, and I think we're very loose and confident and really going in with some house money on Sunday. Talk about uh, Indiana and kind of the challenge they present. Uh, 17 Final Fours, seven national championships, certainly a great pedigree. Uh, Armstrong Stadium, one of the toughest places to go in college soccer. But just really a high-octane team, very athletic, great team speed, uh, suffocating offense. But a team that's kind of, uh, you know, in their last seven games are 2-3-2. Two, and two, uh, Got eliminated uh, early in the Big Ten tournament. Haven't played a game in 11 days, and I like to think at this time of the year, uh, having played three postseason games in the last uh, seven days for us, the routine and the continuity and, and kind of being in that rhythm uh, is an advantage for us. You guys controlled the, uh, the clock and had a lot more shots on goal, especially in the first half last night than Kentucky. But as time was ticking down, I mean, it was the 86th minute before Luke scored. How nervous were you or worried that you know this was going to go beyond regulation? I was surprised with how um, in the middle I was uh, emotionally, but I really felt we had command of the game from the get-go. Uh, but soccer is a funny game where it doesn't matter if you have command. And I kept saying to myself as the game wore on, are they going to hit like one great shot and win the game one nothing? But I thought we looked like we were playing to win. They were playing not to lose. Our guys looked like they, like they had been there before. And I really felt uh, confident, whether it be overtime or regulation, that we were knocking on the door too much and, and they were weathering too many storms. And ultimately, we were going to cash in. How would you describe Luke's goal? I mean, can you kind of set that up? <clears throat> What's interesting is we had three uh, point blank chances in regulation. Uh, and we didn't put him away. And then Luke's, the one that he scored on was kind of a redirecting of the ball. Uh, like a cross into him, he took a touch, and then if the goal's over there, he kind of swung the outside of his left foot and kind of poked it. And I think if there was a radar gun in the net, it probably would have said all of nine miles an hour kind of trickled in. But that's soccer for you. You know, you, you make the ones you're not expected to make, and sometimes you miss the layup, so to speak. So uh, good goal. And then, um, you know, friends of the program have said, why didn't you score earlier? It would have been nice. But I prefer to score with only four minutes left because we only had to hang on for four minutes. So it depends how you look at it. What were the guys' reactions after the game? Was there celebrations, <clears throat> or were they very business-like? They were happy, but I have to say they weren't, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, they weren't a 12 or a 10. I think they were about an 8. And I, uh, even this afternoon, think that they, you know, have played Indiana in the preseason the last two years and beaten them. And I think they realized that it was an NCAA tournament game last night, but really the process and the people and the game itself, it was just the next game. And I don't think they're enamored with it and overwhelmed by it, and I'm pretty uh, happy with where they are mentally. Can you talk a little bit about the seniors on this year's team? You know, Lou, Justin, they play a big role in what you guys do. If you go up the middle of our team, Justin Marshall obviously is, is, a, is a top goalkeeper. Uh, and James Carey is kind of the quarterback of our team, the emotional leader. And then obviously Luke, uh, you know, being the go-to guy, uh, those are the three core guys up the middle. Luke uh, having a great senior year, really breaking through after, uh, you know, I wouldn't say two disappointing years, but I knew he felt he could do more, and we did as well. But really, collectively, if you add up the pieces, Andre Bezera is a great team guy, a backup goalkeeper. And then certainly, um, you know, Adar and Sean, uh, that center back, left back, right back, goalkeeper, those four guys in the back of our team, I always liken the uh, back four to an offensive line in football. Not a lot of uh, accolades, not a lot of um, you know fanfare, but certainly the core of the team. They are the ones really who make this go. They're certainly the the um, you know the stalwarts and really the key to I think to long term success is the back of your team and, and the uh, you know what you can do on the defensive end. So uh, I owe them a lot. They really jumped on board when I took over here and they've stuck uh, with it. They were 2-13-1 as freshmen, certainly a broken program, certainly could have ran from the problems or ran from the situation and didn't. And I think, uh, you know, they really are builders in every sense of the word rather than followers, which you see at some other programs sometimes. Are you friends with Indiana coach um, Todd Yeagley? 
Can you give a history with him? Yeah, he's probably my best friend in coaching, and then their assistant coach, Ernie Yarbrough, is you know, definitely my best friend in coaching. So uh, Todd's father, Jerry, uh, is the John Wooden of college soccer, um, calls me before and after every game. Um, I tell Brian Hicks I still pinch myself when Coach Yeagley calls me after every game. Uh, there's a lot of Indiana in this program. There's a lot of Indiana in me. There's a lot of uh, Indiana fiber in, in how I built this program. Uh, character, honesty, uh, some of the pieces greater than the parts themselves. And we've had some conversations this week where, um, you know, we're not thrilled we have to play each other, but it's part of it. And I have a great amount of respect for them and, and what the Indiana brand means in soccer. But at the same time, I'm very proud and confident bringing my program into that place, knowing that we can match up with them. And uh, it certainly is a special day for me and would be a very special moment for the program to, to advance and, and get past a program like Indiana. When will you guys head to Bloomington? We'll go tomorrow. We're going to train here in the morning. Um, you know, the the NCA gives you the one-hour session. I always feel like that's a, a dress rehearsal type thing and more of a walk the field, get out there to get out there type thing. And I really like to have the meat of our preparation done here where we're not uh, under the gun on a timer and, and that type of thing. So we'll go. We'll be out there in the late afternoon and then settle in. And um, a place we've played before, I think it's an easy trip. I think we're going to travel well. And, uh, again, they haven't played in 11 days. We've played uh, three gun-to-your-head games in the last week. And I, I like to think that, that there's something to be said for that. How much will your defense be um, on display against a guy like Eric Zavaleta, mm -hmm. uh, who is the Big Ten's offensive player of the year? Yeah, I think we're going to have to defend uh, more than we did last night. I think we had command of the game last night. Uh, our offense and our possession was our uh, the main source of our defending last night. I think we're going to actually have to win more one-on-one -on -one battles, and they have more pieces we're going to have to deal with. And we're going to have to be opportunistic. I don't think we're going to have as many chances or as much command of the game offensively as we had. But certainly this is a team now that scored um, 49 goals, I believe, 48 goals, top five in the country. So the good teams can put pressure on you defensively and offensively. We've proven we can do that. And uh, some days it's going to be a three-goal game and other days it's going to be a one nothing game. And I really feel like both sides of the ball now we're capable of uh, winning it you know, via one or the other.